Good afternoon, council, applicants, staff. Welcome to the Gig Harbor City Council special meeting. I'd like to call to order this meeting of Tuesday, January 18th, 2022. The time is 1.03 p.m. And I will turn it over to our city clerk, Josh Stecker, for a roll call. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councilmember Denson. Here. Councilmember Henderson. Here. Councilmember Likens. Here. Councilmember Rodenberg. Here. Councilmember Storset. Here. Councilmember Whoop. Here. All of council is present. And now I'm going to do a roll call of the applicants for the vacant council position. Uh, our applicants are in our attendees section right now, so they can't speak, but I'm going to ask them to raise their hand using the raise hand function on the Zoom meeting. Um, and I'm going to go down the list. Gary Glein. Gary Glein is here. Mark Hoppen. And Mark is here. Peter Frazier. And Peter is here. Mary Barber. And Mary's here. Katrine Dietz. Sorry, Katrin Dietz. And she's here. John Scancy. And I don't see John Scancy with his hand raised at this point. I don't see him in the attendees. Uh, Jack Reeves. And Jack Reeves is here. And Les McCollum. And Les McCollum is here. So we have seven of our eight applicants present. John Scansey is not present right now. Okay. Um, do you want to just let us know, uh, maybe at the time of his name, if he has arrived in the or in the attendees section? Uh, yes, I can do that. Okay. Okay. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us. Um, I'm assuming that most of council, if not all, um, saw the communications between um, our city attorney and the and the council. Yes. Okay. So. Um, We'll just remind you if, if needed, um, that if there are any people that, um, any candidates that you need to recuse yourself from a vote or from participating in discussion, we'll just remind you at the time um, of that. Okay, so um, one item of business is to fill the city council vacancy through our interview process and city clerk Stecker, I will turn that over to you to uh, explain the agenda bill. Okay, thank you again, Mayor. Um, so we all know why we're here. We're uh, conducting interviews to fill the vacancy on our city council. Um, we've gone over the administrative policy over the last few meetings, uh, but just a quick recap. What we're going to do today is um, interview. We have eight uh, eligible candidates for the interview today. Um, the interviews will be 30 minutes each. They'll consist of a five minute uh, opening period where the applicants can make their opening remarks to council. Then there are seven predetermined questions that council members will take turns asking. Um, when you will each ask the question that you submitted, so follow along on the list and when it's your turn to ask the question, uh, that'll be your cue to, to ask away. Um, after those questions, there's a period of time uh, to ask open-ended questions or questions that, didn't, that may have come up during the interview of each of the candidates. Um, the total allowed time for each interview is 30 minutes. We are, I'm going to be keeping track of how the interviews are going, keeping a timer on this end, and I'll give you a heads up when we reach 15 minutes or, and or 20 minutes, um, just so you can kind of gauge how the interview is going, make sure you have enough time to get all your questions answered. Um, the order of candidates has been randomly determined ahead of time. That order is going to be Gary Glein, Mark Hoppen, Peter Frazier, Mary Barber, Katrin Dietz, John Scancy, Jackie Reeves and Les McCollum. So that is the interview that we will bring in the candidates for their, uh, the, the order for their interviews. Um, according to the policy that the city council has adopted, um, if there are more than six candidates, council can determine if they want to interview all candidates or some candidates um, that are not required to interview each and every single one. Um, that's a determination that we're gonna ask you to make here in a minute. Um, as we go through the steps, 
at any point during this meeting, if council feels it's necessary, you can go into executive session to discuss the qualifications of the individual candidates. Um, executive session is only for discussing their qualifications. It's not for discussing how you plan to vote or strategizing you know, how council wants to make their process or their decision. Um, and then once all the interviews are completed and you've completed your discussions, um, at that point, then we will take the vote. Um, the way we'll do that is we'll open it up for nominations. Any council member can nominate any applicant. Uh, no second is required. Once we have all the uh, nominations, we'll ask council to make a motion to close nominations. That'll be seconded and we'll take a vote on that. And then we will open it up for voting. And the way we're gonna vote is each, can each council member gets one vote. You're gonna write the name of the candidate that you want to vote for uh, out of the nominees. And then you will hold up your uh, candidate name when the mayor calls for the vote. And we'll do that all simultaneously so that um, all council members are voting at the same time and no one has the advantage of seeing how other council members have voted before making their own vote. So at that time, um, you'll need to make sure that you have a pen and paper handy so that you can get that written down and shown on your camera when the time comes. Uh, we will vote uh, for all nominees simultaneously. Um, as soon as we have any nominee that receives four votes, that nominee will be uh, appointed to the city council um, and then we will move on from there. If we have a vote and no nominee receives four votes, we will vote again. And the second time we vote, we will remove the uh, nominees that receive the fewest votes. Um, and we will repeat that process until someone gets four votes. So uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer those now about this process. Um, the next step for council now is to make a motion to either interview all eight of the applicants that we have scheduled or to uh, make a motion to interview a specific number of the candidates, if that's council's uh, choice as well. So I will leave that to you to decide. Yes, council member Luke. I would make a motion that we interview five of the candidates. And yes, which, should, should she just specify which five uh, those are? Yeah, I think you should specify which five and then you get a second and then those five can be um, amended by other council members if they want, desire to. Uh, and I would suggest we interview Mark Hoppen, Katrin Ditz, Les McCallum, Mary Barber, and somebody needs to add a fifth. So we'll have a motion on the floor to interview four and then council can amend with a fifth or more as desired. If okay, there's a second for that. That's fine. Okay, council member Storset. Yes, thanks. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think my suggestion kind of was going along with with Jenny is I was just curious if we, if it's common to go into executive session and, and discuss if there's anybody that's, you know, we don't think is qualified, doesn't meet the criteria. So wasn't sure if that's something that we could do this early on or we, we go into it. We can go into executive session for that. Um, first, let's get a second for Council Member Luke's motion. Um, and then if council feels like they need to go into executive session to discuss specific qualifications, you can at, at this time. I'll second that. Oh, sorry. Okay. That's okay. Robin, you second seconded the interview of the four candidates that Councilmember Luke mentioned. Oh yeah, but then I'm going to suggest amending it to five. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. And what is your amendment? I, I I would like to amend it to five and add Gary Glenn's name. And if that's acceptable to the maker of the motion, you don't have to uh, vote on that. It just becomes part of the main motion. Okay. Very acceptable. Okay, okay. So the motion is now to interview those five. And we had a second, and that's from Councilmember Denson. So we're yes. good to go. Correct. Okay. So all those in favor well, say. No, you, you have what? council members that want to make comments. Oh. oh, yes. Thank you. Council comments. Councilmember Henderson. Um, I'll have to recuse myself for voting on this since one of these five candidates donated to my campaign. Okay.
Um, is there anyone else that needs to recuse himself? Uh, yes, Councilmember Likens. Yes, um, I need to, I'm recusing myself from discussion of two of the candidates. Um, if I heard the names right, um, they were recent donors to my campaign. Okay, do we need to, Tony or Josh, do we need to name those individuals now or in ex executive session? Let, let's name those individuals now. We can get that out of the way. Okay, so Council Member Henderson, which um, person are you recusing yourself from interviewing? <clears throat> Gary Glein. Okay. And Council Member Likens, who are your two? Um, I need to recuse myself from Gary Glein and Les McCallum. Okay. Um, Councilmember Denson. I'd like to make another amendment. Is that okay? Yes. I believe so. I'm not sure if we had to, <laughs> didn't want to miss the voting. Um, I'd like to remove the name Les McCallum and add the name Peter Frazier. Is there a second? Okay, seeing none, we will stick with the original motion of Mark Hoppin, Katrin Dietz, Les McCallum, and Mary Barber. And, and added Ryan. Gary Glenn. Yes. Okay. Are there any other council members who need to recuse themselves from any applicants uh, interviewing or discussion? Okay. Is it the wish of council to go into executive session now for a discussion? I have a question. Yes, council member Henderson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, reiterating what Josh said about the purpose of the executive session, are we going to be able to discuss how the questions are proposed to the candidates? Or is it just to talk qualifications and that's it? Otherwise, I'll, I'll mention it now in public versus during the executive session. The, the executive session is only to discuss the qualifications. So if you want to talk about process for the interviews, you'd have to do that in open session. OK. Um, well, I definitely would. I, I think we need to be cognizant of the fact that if we start asking the questions right now, uh, the first candidate like anything is almost has zero time to prepare, whereas the last candidate on the list will have significant time to prepare. Is there any way that we could um, either put the candidates in some sort of a waiting room while we then, then everybody's on a level playing field with the questions. Nobody's, nobody's got extra time to prepare and nobody's got yeah, uh, apologies, Councilmember Henderson, but um, earlier this morning I emailed all the questions to the candidates, so they've all seen them in advance. All right. I, sorry, I did not inform Council of that, but we made that decision about 10 o'clock this morning, so they've all seen the questions. Yes. Okay. So if if there is no desire to go into an executive session now, then I would suggest that we start with our first. Candidate. Oh, we need to vote on the motion. Here. Yeah, let's let's vote on the, the motion. Oh, thank you. I'm still getting used to all this council. Thank you for <laughs> bearing with me. I'm calling on Josh a lot for help today. Um, okay, so we need to vote on the amended motion of the five applicants that were mentioned. Do we all those in favor say aye? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. And I believe we have two abstained. Yes. yes, correct. Yes, I forgot to ask abstain. Thank you. Okay. Josh, are you wanting to call upon the candidates? Yes. Um, I think we're ready to go into our interviews. So the first one up will be Gary Gwine, and I will promote him to a panel so you'll be able to see him momentarily. And for council's um, awareness as well, if you have recused yourself from, uh, from an interview, we, I will read the question that you presented. And so that question will still be asked. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so if you're recusing yourself, you should, there we go. Thank you. 
Thank you. They are on it. <laughs> All right, it looks like Gary's joined the room. Uh, there he is. Hi, Gary. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Okay, so the first question is coming from Council Member Storset. Hi, Gary. <clears throat> first question, as I imagine you have in front of you, but what skills are now actually you? Be, be, before we start? Oh. He's supposed to have five minutes to present himself. Oh, and then we ask questions. Okay. Yes. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Thank you again, Tony. You're welcome. Okay, Gary, you have five minutes. And Josh, are you? Do you have any kind of um timer? Mayor, if I could just make an announcement real quick, because of our motion, I just wanted to let the candidates know that the, just to confirm the candidates that we are going to interview today are Gary Blind, Mark Hoppen, Katrine Dietz, Les McCollum, and Mary Barber. So the other candidates, um, Peter Frazier and John Scancy and Jack Reeves will not be interviewed today. So they don't need to stay on this call. Okay. Gary, can you start with the correct pronunciation of your last name, please? It's actually pronounced Glenn. I'll Thank answer you. to Glenn or Glenn, but Glenn is the proper pronunciation. So. Okay. Okay, should I go ahead? Yes, please. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Good. Thank you. Uh, in terms of qualifications, I guess there's three things that I think might qualify me to join you on the council. And one of them is my long connection to the community. And second, my experience in management. And third, my leadership involvement in community activities. And uh, in terms of, my, I've been living in the Gig Harbor area since 1976, but my uh, grandmother's side of the family homesteaded in Rosedale in 1909. And, uh, my father's brother built what is now the Eden Boatyard in 1945. And so I've been coming to the harbor and been involved in it for many years. In terms of management experience, I've spent some 40 years doing managing and consulting. Educationally, uh, I focused on urban sciences in my bachelor's and master's work at the University of Washington. And so I studied urban geography, municipal government, city planning, a variety of things. I also worked in consulting for two and a half years where we did city planning, shopping center feasibility and things like that. We did, for example, a city plan for Tumwater, Helena, Montana, many projects that I worked on. Uh, the, uh, in terms of community and well, some of the business involvement, I actually was a vice president of Blue Cross for 12 years, and then I actually ran my own business for 19 years in Tacoma. Uh, after I sold my business, I got involved in community activities uh, in the harbor. Uh, part of it was through Rotary, and one project I'd like to mention is my wife and I decided that we needed a community gathering place near the water. So we initiated the Scansy Park Pavilion project uh, and, and developed that over two years. And so we generated some $40,000 of donation and 650 hours of uh, donated labor and built that. The other thing I would mention in terms of community involvement is the Downtown Waterfront Alliance. I was president for three and a half years and really emphasized partnering with the city and did a variety of studies, fuel dock feasibility, parking and transportation, and we did a lot of work with the University of Washington on the storefront studio studies to come up with ideas for improving the town. In terms of some of the reasons that I have for seeking the office, first is I, I deeply care about the city. Uh, I want to preserve its character, and, but provide balance with future needs of the city as well. I think I have the experience and skills to help the council, particularly this council, uh, to create policy and solve problems. I'm really impressed with the new council. Uh, we've sometimes have had some rather polarized situations in uh, city elected uh, people in past years. And I think we have a particularly good group and that has the ability to work together. And it's something that I feel I could contribute to that group. I think uh, we have an opportunity to heal and be more progressive. And it's something we need based on some of the staff morale and other problems we've had the last few years. Uh, I do know how much work it takes to be a council member. 
Uh, those of you that have been on the council for a while certainly know that very well. I don't take that lightly. Uh, I know how much work it takes to review things in advance, and I guess I'm prepared to do that and would like to be a good team member. The last thing I'd like to uh, mention is that I don't really represent any particular interest group. Uh, I really just, uh, I'm a decision maker who likes to see diversity, evaluate alternatives, and make a decision. And it would be an honor to be selected to your group. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Now our first question comes from Council Member Storset. Hey, Gary, what skills or knowledge do you have to offer the City Council to differentiate you and would complement the Council? Well, it's harder to differentiate. Uh, but I, you know, I know what I've read about all of your skills. Some of you know a bit, some I don't. But I think that uh, what I just mentioned, my management and community organization involvement, I think would be an asset uh, to the council. I also think uh, my work in consulting and education in the urban sciences would be something that would add to the synergy of the council, uh, have particular background in that area. Uh, my decision-making approach, I think would be an asset. I'm a believer in uh, entertaining diversity and listening to other people before you make a decision. And that's what I would encourage in working with the rest of you. I also, when I approach a problem, uh, focus on research and analysis. Uh, those of you that have counted cars when we've done parking surveys know that we develop data to make decisions and that's an orientation that I have. Finally, in decision-making, I'm a strong believer in building commitment to the uh, final conclusion. You need to work together, involve people to build that commitment. So those are some of the things, uh, Councilman Storset, that I think I would bring to your council to add uh, to the synergism of this group. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. I did forget to mention you will have uh, two minutes to answer each question. So thank you, uh, you stayed within that. In that first one, next is Councilmember Denson. Hey, Mr. Glenn, thanks so much for applying for the position. My question is, what would you like to see, or what would you like Gig Harbor to look like in 10 years? What would you like to see change? What would you like to see stay, stay the same? I'm sorry, I'm sorry to be echoing, I'm not sure why. <laughs> well, some of the things I'd like to see, you know, I live in Millville, so, you know, I think about downtown, but that's not certainly the only part of Gig Harbor, but I'd like to see economically viable stores in 10 years. I believe that maintaining our character in part uh, is keeping a small retail core that works and it has to be economically viable and I think have the character that we all love. I also would like to see where uh, downtown is not something you drive through, it's something you drive to. And so I would love to see improved flat work in the downtown area, maybe sidewalks and places to hang out and you park on the perimeter and walk in, uh, I think I'd like to see that. In terms of transportation, I'd like to see us with uh, improved freeway ingress and egress and some kind of an east-west connection. Uh, these are things that are longer term involve working with other governmental ent entities. And so that makes them difficult, but we've got to start. These are both critical needs in the community you know, I look at uh, how, how many things of the state has set a priority of 10 years down the road, and some of these we need to get moving on them. So I'd like to see we've either done those or we have plans in place to get them done. I'd like to see a fuel dock, and I'd like to see the purse saners still leaving in June to go to Alaska. Thank you. Our next question comes from Councilmember Wook. You're, You're on, on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, Gary, for being here. You know, when I'm out doorbelling and meeting our Gate Harbor neighbors, they insist that as their council member, I do everything I can to to limit growth within our city. How would you honor and respect that request? Well, I, I believe in uh, maintaining our character as a small waterfront community. And even if 
it's the areas Gig Harbor North or Uptown that aren't in that area, people still kind of relate to this small downtown character. I think it's important for us to maintain that. And part of that means maintaining water access, view corridors, and the presence of trees and this feeling of a small town identity. In managing growth, one of my greatest concerns is that we don't outstrip our transportation and other infrastructure. Uh, I think sometimes we get a little bit out of sync. And, uh, you know, if we drive around our large roundabout in Gig Harbor North, I think we see kind of what happens when we get a little bit of out of sync and creating density too fast. So I think that we need to control our growth. Uh, but I don't know that we can totally stop it, but do it in a way that's consistent with what we can handle. Thank you. Uh, the next question is from Councilmember Henderson, and I will be reading this question. Briefly provide your views on climate change. Should the city of Gig Harbor take any actions regarding climate change? If yes, outline three actions you would support the city taking. If no, explain why no action is necessary. Well, I think action is necessary. Uh, First, I think we need to recognize that climate change is occurring. And yes, there are still people that deny this, but it is. And it has very significant short and long range implications. And so I think it definitely is a factor for the city. I think the city should take actions to, on their part, uh, to limit carbon emissions. I think that all entities, individuals, governments should really think, businesses should think about that and try to do that. I think another thing that this last uh, week has made us think about with the high tides and the low pressure is what plans do we need for mitigating the impact of extreme weather and tidal events? Uh, you know, you look at the uh, Scancy Brothers Park and you can go out and dive off the bench. Uh, we're gonna see higher tides and climate changes are gonna contribute to that. So I think the city needs to be proactive and limiting its own contribution to that with admissions, but also plan for the potential implications uh, of climate change in the future. Thank you. The next question uh, will, was presented by Council Member Likens, and I will also read this question. Briefly describe your views on the COVID-19 pandemic. What do you believe our city's role is in policymaking, supporting, and or communication with our citizens, businesses, and organizations during the pandemic. And again, similar to climate change first, I think the city needs to definitely recognize that this is a serious public health event and it is a public health issue. And uh, so we need to treat it that way. It has really long range implications in a lot of ways that we haven't even seen yet affecting work, education, commuting, shopping, I think that this is gonna cause us to be a bit different forever and the city needs to, to address that. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit cautious on economic help from the city. Uh, it should only be done when it's essential and not provided or duplicated. I mean, I'm involved with several business entities and we've gone through some tough times in the last couple of years economically. And so we've seen involvement of uh, the federal government, the county, the state, and local municipalities, and sometimes it's duplicated. We also created too much funding and helped fuel inflation. And so I think there's a role for the city, but you gotta be careful not to just jump on and duplicate what's being done by other uh, government uh, entities. And that also applies to health regulations. I mean, in running the businesses that I've been involved in, you're getting regulations that come from various levels. The primary things that affect you come from the county, but we don't need to duplicate some of those things. But I think there is a role to recognize it and do the things you can to help that. Great, thank you so much. Councilor Luke, did you have a question? I, I do, are we allowed follow-up questions? Um, at the end, after all seven questions have been answered, then there will be around a 10 minute period of time to ask miscellaneous or follow up questions. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, our next question comes from Council Member Rodenberg. Uh, Gary, in the performance of our responsibilities as council, uh, we often have subjects that require that we come together, uh, collaborate, 
and uh, as come together as a group to come up with a solution. Uh, also, often there are differences in opinion amongst council people. So could you please describe how you helped achieve the outcome of the most complex negotiation that you've ever been involved with? Well, I, you know, I, I feel like I've been involved in this kind of situation many times in uh, my working life and private life, and I'll maybe mention a few things. One of them in my manufacturing business, it was a union shop. And so I negotiated uh, union contracts while maintaining good relations with employees and the union leadership. I mean, my belief is you can make a decision, you may have different opinions, but you can work together. And so I think that involved the situation, but I think there are other things where we've done that. Uh, I've been heavily involved in Gig Harbor Rotary for many years, and we've been involved in funding many community activities. And uh, during my presidency, there were requests from YMCA and the hospital and uh, from the museum for significant funding. Uh, there were advocates within Rotary for each of these, and it was sometimes con contentious. Uh, we gave several hundred thousand dollars these three organizations to help them. But I'm proud of being able to work and let people air their opinions, but reach a conclusion that we could all accept. And that's very important to me. The last thing I'd mentioned related to this has to do with the Waterfront Alliance. It was called the Gig Harbor Historical Waterfront Association when I took over the presidency and nobody could quite figure it out. We did a total rebranding of the Waterfront Alliance uh, using an outside consulting firm. But I think most important, we involved 100 people from the community in the process to discuss what its role should be in the community and how we should brand it. And so we reached a conclusion, which is now called mostly the Alliance, that really kind of uh, got a lot of people involved and got a lot of support for the decision. And so I think you can handle situations where people differ, whether it's a union contract or rebranding or making financial decisions that bring people together. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. And the final question is from myself. Uh, as a member of the council, you would be expected to participate in government activities outside of the regular city council meetings do you have any particular scheduling problems that would preclude your participation? Well, when I thought about it, I said the council is my priority and that I have the ability to adjust my schedule. But what I thought about is I'm, I'm bowling in a league on Monday. So would you guys mind changing the council meeting to some other? <laughs> I wish we could, but unfortunately we can't. <laughs> I probably wouldn't be bowling in that league. No, this is, I don't, uh, I take this very seriously and I should not be entering this process if I'm not willing to do the work and change the schedules to meet the council's needs. So I don't have a problem with that. Great, thank you so much. Um, I believe we have about seven or eight minutes for miscellaneous questions. Um, council member Benson and her cat. <laughs> I'm happy to let council member Wu go first because she kind of I know okay, I, I thought I'm going in order of hands, but thank you. You're doing Council great. Member, <laughs> Council <laughs> member Luke. <laughs> uh, yes, I have two questions for you. Um, are you vaccinated and boosted? Yes, both. Thank you. Uh, along the items of growth on Judson Street, there is a, we have a shopping center there. It is currently zoned for 16 feet in height. Would you be in favor of uh, changing that zoning and, and letting it go higher? And if so, how high? Well, I don't have a specific answer, but I'm familiar with proposals that were made about five years ago. And uh, the discussion was really, well, first, it should not block the view corridors. I mean, that's, I don't know what that number is. Uh, in that a proposal that was made, uh, the developer offered to mitigate that by providing other things. You know, that could have been underground parking, it could have been public space. I think you look at those and consider it. But I don't know what the height is, but it should not violate view corridors and it should be synergistic to downtown. I'm a downtown resident. I used to do all my shopping there when there was a grocery store there. I would love to do that again. And so if we can create that, which I think makes downtown work, then I'm for it. And I think that, uh, 
yeah, you could have, I mean, they were proposing larger density. When you consider that, you've got to look at how it fits with everything else, but we want our downtown to work. So I don't have an absolute answer on the height, but that's the kind of things that I would look at in considering that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Council Member Denson. Okay, Mr. Glenn, should you be appointed to council, would it be your intention to run for council when this position comes up, I believe in 2024? Well, that's a decision that I would make at that time. I realize this is a, if I was accepted, this would be a, a, a little under a two year commitment, but I would certainly consider that, but I would consider it based on the circumstances of that time. Okay, are there any other additional questions from council? Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Glenn. And Josh, I will let you proceed with the next um, set of instructions and the next candidate. Okay, thank you, Mary. The next candidate will be Mark Hoppen. And I will bring him over from the attendee side here momentarily. And it looks like we have Mark on. Hi, Mark. Hello. Mark, good afternoon. Hi. Thank you for joining us. So you will have five minutes to present your credentials to the council. Okay, um, uh, I'm not gonna reiterate uh, the VITA that I turned in. Uh, I assume that you've all read that, but I am gonna talk about a couple things. Every council member, needs to understand that the primary value that council supports is financial integrity for the city, the municipal entity. I had an interesting experience when I was uh, making a transition from being a Gig Harbor City Council member to being a city administrator. Gig Harbor had experienced a handful of audit findings every year since 1946, consistently. Uh, I, I knew that they were serious, but I didn't realize how much. And so I decided I would go check it out firsthand with the state audit department. And I went down to meet with Lee Reeves, who uh, had been in the audit department for about 30 years and was there about when Brian Sontag was coming on board as the state auditor. And Lee Reeves knew everything. And he was kind of a, a crusty, longtime veteran of state government. And when I went down there to meet with him, I asked him, what he thought about Gig Harbor. And he looked me in the eye and he said, Mark, Gig Harbor is one of the four worst municipal entities in the state of Washington. And I said, Mr. Reeves, does that include all the school districts? And he went, yep. And I knew that was like about 1300 entities. So I thought, well, oh, bottom four is pretty bad. And I was getting red in the face because I didn't know what to think. And I said, well, Mr. Reeves, uh, what does it mean? And he goes, Mark, let me tell you what it means. It means we hate coming to your city so much that we draw straws to see who has to go. And so I knew that if I took on the task of ensuring the fiscal integrity of Gig Harbor, I was taking on a task that was not an automatic win for me. And I decided that I was gonna to have to be committed to that. So 10 years later, uh, Brian Sontag shows up at a council meeting and gives the second council or second uh, finance director who I hired, who's still there, Dave Rodenbach, and I, an award for having a sterling performance over the previous 10 years. And to this date, as far as I know, Gig Harbor's never had another uh, audit finding. In fact, I'm not sure Dave could even get one if he tried. Uh, so fiscal integrity to me is really important. And I realize what it means to a council member. And I learned firsthand in an embarrassing way, uh, that lesson. Secondly, cities have to have great staff members. And I was always embarrassed to ask staff members to do things I wasn't personally willing to do. And one of those things was pick up the legal science. And every Saturday, of course, it's a problem that you've all resolved pretty handily now by policy and practice. But back then it wasn't so well handled. And so I got in my Ford Courier truck and every Saturday morning I'd go around and pick up all the signs that were illegal and I'd take all the A boards up to city hall and stack them up and I'd throw all the junk in the garbage. But one day 
I was, I'd noticed that some days there were less signs than there were other days. And one day I was up by Patterson's fruit stand and I got out of my car and I made it across the street and on the north side of uh, Olympic Drive where Patterson's is across the street, I jumped up onto the bank and I had to hit it with my left foot and reach for the sign of my left hand. And just as I was going for it, a right foot hit alongside my left foot and a right hand came up and grabbed that sign. It was Dave Brereton who decided not to show up today. And he looked at me and I looked at him like, what are, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? He thought he was doing them all. And I thought I was doing them all, but actually we were doing them together. And I think Gig Harbor has great staff members. And it's not just that everybody I know named Dave is great. It's that Gig Harbor has always had great staff members. And so I think it's important for council to help buttress up both the fundamentals of finance and the fundamentals of staff. Thank you so much. Our first question comes from council member Storset. That's hi, Mark. What skills or knowledge do you have to offer the city council to differentiate you and would complement the council? Well, I've actually been in the council member role, which differentiates me from other applicants for this, this role. I understand firsthand what administration does with 30 years of experience and how it differs from the council role. I've been responsible for numerous comprehensive plan elements and worked out problems associated with those, including at least a half dozen pros plans over the years. I understand the negotiation of public properties. When I started in New Harbor, there was only one park. When I got done, there were 17. I negotiated every last property and presented it to the city council. I've served on multiple state, county committees and boards, uh, PCRC, PSRC, the Visitors and Convention Bureau, economic development activities with both Pierce County and with the Tacoma Pierce County Economic Development Board. I've served on two airport advisory committees, both uh, the local first, Tacoma Narrows Airport Advisory Committee, but also the more recent SeaTac Advisory Committee for five years. Uh, I served on the Washington State Narrows Bridge and Highway 16 Corridor MIS group, which is the big federal uh, NEPA action you take prior to building something big. But I also served along with four federal reps, three state reps, one county rep, and me, who they thought was an engineer, but they were wrong about that, uh, on the environmental team that reviewed everything for the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, a stack of stuff a yard high from the floor, in addition to doing my regular job. Uh, I've worked on uh, the local RIRA, uh, Water Resource Inventory Area Committee for our area. I've served on other environmental review committees, including uh, at the request of Governor Gregoire for the Public Works Board, uh, the Puget Sound Partnership Interagency Committee, which uh, was really confusing to me because the budget process for state employees is Byzantine. And I, was, I spent probably half a year trying to figure out what the heck they were talking about as I was participating, but it was a very interesting thing to do. Uh, I, I know a lot about the history of Gig Harbor and but I don't know as much as George Busich did because one day George Busich, uh, Jake's brother, was mad about something and he sat me down and he went through property by property all the way around the bay and told me everything that had ever gone wrong on every single lot in order all around the bay. So I know I don't know everything, but I'm good at listening to people and I think that will be a compliment to council. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Our second question comes from council member Denson. All right, Mr. Hoppin, thanks so much for applying. Um, what would you like Gig Harbor to look like in 10 years? What would you like to see change or stay the same? Well, I'd like it to be greener than it is today. And I'd, uh, I would hope that we would preserve single family residential areas in their character, particularly in the downtown area. Uh, I'd like to see enhanced riverine and conservation systems on Donkey Creek and Crescent Creek. Uh, interestingly, uh, Gary Glenn, who preceded me, has a very good idea about how to work on Crescent Creek. And I'm, I'm hoping that maybe that could be replicated on Donkey Creek as part of a rotary project that we're considering. And I think Gary is really uh, up to speed on all that stuff. Um, I'd like to see a renewed downtown, retaining the small scale. Uh, interestingly, I've already told Olympic uh, uh, Mark, you went on mute. Mark, you're on, you're on mute.
Oh, I think he went back on mute. <laughs> You're off there for a second. No, it'll work. I, I, touched, I touched the keyboard. No worries. Um, so uh, we're preserving a, a, a small town scale is going to be really important. Uh, you were talking about the shopping center, Jenny. And uh, I believe that nothing higher than three stories in back and two stories in front, like a brownstone residential approach, would work well in that property. The five stories that were proposed years ago are akin to what they have in uh, Ballard. I, I assume you've seen Ballard. Uh, so um, I'll, I'd also like to see a more complete pedestrian sidewalk and trail system and improved local transit. Thank you. Uh, our third question comes from Councilmember Luke. Thank you, Mark, for being here today. When I'm out doorbelling and meeting our Gig Harbor neighbors, they insist that as their council member, I do everything I can to limit growth in the city. How would you honor and respect that request? Uh, where, where I started from as a council member was to do that exactly. And what I found out is that they were complicating utility obligations like a sewer system that was gonna cost a lot of money that the small amount of people that were in the original ULID were never gonna be able to pay for. And so I realized that it was a more complicated relationship than I thought it was gonna be. But limiting growth is basically uh, trying to assure that the relationship between housing density, expected population, and available acreage is, is in harmony. Uh, Gig Harbor's comp plan has not been in that harmony over the last half decade. And uh, this council has, not this council, but the council just prior to this configuration council has made strides to uh, make reasonable adjustments to that. Uh, I think we need to explore density in green areas and preserve green space while ensuring the economic use of private property. We need to explore consequences to utilities in terms of rates, projects, and capacity, because those things are related to the capacity for growth. We need to fight off attempts to randomly use state authority to define local land use, which is ongoing right now. Uh, and the state has had a practice, which I agree with in vague concept, which is trying to figure out ways to house more people and create more affordable housing, but using a ham-handed approach that removes local control of comprehensive planning is not the right way to go about that. So hopefully we can work towards fighting that off. Thank you. Um, our next question comes from Councilmember Henderson. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, briefly provide your views on climate change. Should the city of Gig Harbor take any actions regarding climate change? If yes, outline three actions you would support the city taking. If no action is necessary, explain why no action would be necessary. Since I retired last April, uh, I've been really committed to this objective. I serve on the ICMA Sustainable Communities Committee for the next few years, even though I'm retired. And I'm also working with Rotary, kind of like Gary, uh, working on stream health, uh, considering other things like reducing plastics and, uh, and, and, and preserving pollinators. And uh, I'm, I'm totally into this kind of stuff. What I think, I'm going to be very specific about what I think we might do in the near term, as opposed to just reducing the carbon footprint. I think we ought to work with Pierce County on its waste contract with our waste provider to expand plastic recycling. I'm, I'm at a loss to know why we have such restrictions on the amount of plastic that we can put into our plastic bin. There must be some way to enhance that. I'd like to work with uh, local community groups like the one Gary and I are on uh, to enhance the health of Crescent Creek and Donkey Creek. Uh, Pierce County uh, has a rather long list of uh, things that they think are important for that. So we should be able to collaborate as volunteers to find ways to even improve culverts, not just pick up things along the river and corridor. And finally, I think uh, Peninsula Light has a pretty good program uh, with uh, its energy efficiency program. I think uh, the city should work with Peninsula Light to enhance that, uh, make it more desirable and available to city residents. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, our next question comes from Council Member Likens. Thank you, Tracy, or Mayor Mark, please. Good afternoon, Mark. Thanks for being here. My question is, briefly describe your views on the COVID-19 pandemic. What do you believe our city's role in policymaking, supporting, 
and or communicating with our citizens, businesses, and organizations during the pandemic. Well, the city has a, an obligation to support state and Pierce County public health directives to ensure the maximum protection to residents of Gig Harbor and to use and to those who use park stores and public areas in the city. Uh, this includes both masking and vaccination recommendations. The city can improve the systemic ways it communicates with households, businesses, and the public generally. There are low cost options available to do that, uh, including social media, local media, and print options. And I think council and, and mayor can work with staff to achieve a higher degree of communication than we have today. Uh, it, it's my view that over the pandemic, the city has behaved uh, very responsible, responsibly to this date and time. But uh, I don't think we're out of the pandemic yet. And even though we're enduring Omicron, which appears to be uh, less dire in its physical consequences, but more transmissible, I think we need to be very careful. Uh, I personally, to answer a, a question that Jenny asked later, I personally am not fully vaccinated yet, but I am committed to be fully vaccinated before I meet with council in person again. And uh, I'm, I've been awaiting for a long time uh, a protein-based uh, vaccine. And there appear to be three on the horizon. Uh, one, the Novavax vaccine that's been approved in numerous countries at this point and looks to be approved in more. Uh, there is a vaccine being trialed by Peter Hotez, who you see on CNN all the time. And there is a vaccine that you don't hear much about that uh, Walter Reed has been working on since the beginning of the pandemic that shows a possibility of ending uh, or immunizing everybody against coronaviruses generally, including SARS. So I'm bullish on that. And I noticed that Dr. Fauci is, I think that poor man takes way too much crap for an 80 year old. And I think he's pretty noble. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm kind of complicated that way, but before I meet with any of you, I will be fully vaccinated. Great, thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from council member Rodenberg. Thank you. Uh, Mark, in the performance of our responsibilities as council members, uh, we often have subjects that require that we come together uh, with a solution uh, to satisfy the most citizens. And quite often there's a differences of opinion within council. Uh, so it's important that we can negotiate these differences. Uh, can you describe to us uh, how you achieved a good solution for the most complicated negotiation that you'd ever been in, please? Well, and I've, I've obviously been in a lot of complicated situations. I, I worked for the nine person King County Council for a while directly with their hats on as commissioners of the King County Flood Control District. I worked for a 13 person board in Snohomish County for the Snohomish, well, not really Snohomish County, but the municipality of the Snohomish Health District on a six month contract. That was really interesting. And everybody was a mayor on the board except for uh, county council people. But I think the most uh, complex negotiation ever con conducted was with uh, property owners uh, who own individual properties. Uh, Pope and Talbot, who is the major property owner, uh, its agent, Olympic Property Group. Uh, and all those folks uh, in Pope and Talbot thought they could wait till the trees grew again. Uh, this is in 1995 through 1997. And, and then a leveraged Southern California retail interest that bought up all the properties closest to the freeway where uh, uh, Target and Home Depot are. And uh, they of course wanted to build something as fast as they could. Uh, Pope and Talbot didn't want to pay for everything, anything. The other uh, areas near the freeway were willing to uh, take out uh, large loans in order to do stuff. And then there were, was the Pierce County Council, Public Works, WASDOT, City Planning Commission, City Council, and last but not least, the state of Washington. There was a day on Sunday of 1997 where I'd worked every day for a year on this issue. I mean, we're talking Saturdays and Sundays, every day. And on a Sunday, I finally resolved this last paragraph from the city attorney that was arguing about some sort of language thing. And I got it all resolved. I can't remember what it was anymore. 
And it was in the pre-annexation agreement. You can read the agreement. It's not too long. It's like 70 pages or something. And I realized I was done. And I could see what was going to happen in Gig Harbor North as if I could see it on a pallet. And what was the outcome of that? Well, the outcome was, much to my surprise, because in order to get uh, through the commercial appraisals on the area, you had to have at least 150% increase in the value of the property. And that measured out okay, and I thought that was going to be fine. But what I didn't understand at the time is that it's cash that matters. And a lot of those vested interests didn't want to put, especially the private property owners, didn't want to put cash into things. But at the end of the trail, when the road was in, the water tank was in, all the sewer and water provisions were made, uh, where the stormwater large vessels were created and people were building, almost immediately property values on bare land in Gig Harbor North jumped 16 to 18 times. And property values underneath buildings, not counting the buildings, just the property, jumped in value 26 to 28 times, which is why Gig Harbor is a healthy place today. Uh, Excuse me, Mark, we're at over two minutes. Um, okay. I'm done. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much for your answer. Um, the last question uh, comes from me. Um, as, a count, as a member of the council, you would be expected to participate in government activities outside of the regular city council meetings. Do you have any particular scheduling problems that would preclude your participation? Well, Tracy, I'm retired. So the answer to that is no. <laughs> Beyond that, when I was earning a doctorate, which I started just before I came to work at the city uh, the year before, I ended up having to take a year off in order to accommodate becoming a city administrator. And then I started up again, as I was at the point of working toward building roads and doing things. And during that time, I completed a 229 page dissertation. Most of the roads that we know in Gig Harbor today that have been rebuilt, rebuilt during that time, that included a lot of the infrastructure in the ground. There was a jump in place for a lot of years. And what I learned chiefly from my experience during that time is that I had no excuse to not make time for everything I really value none whatsoever. I was able to accommodate all those things simultaneously just by deciding that I was going to do it. So I haven't made excuses for how I allocate my time for a long time, and I won't make excuses if I'm a council member. I will always read my packet in advance. I will always ask questions of the city council before the meeting, and I will hold an even demeanor no matter how pressed I am for time. Thank you so much. Appreciate your answer. Thank you for being here. Um, we will move on to our next candidate, City Clerk Stecker. We have about uh, eight minutes left with Mark. Oh, I'm so call. sorry. Can, yes, yes, yes. I am so sorry, Mr. Hoppen. Um, questions from council and let me go to council member Denson. All right, just real quick, we're not asking, or I'm not asking for a commitment, but I'm just wondering um, if you are appointed to city council, would it be your intention to run for city council when this position comes up again? No. No, I see myself as being an interim person, providing as much help as I can to the city in its relationships outside, uh, in, in interagency, things like Puget Sound Regional Council, uh, PSRC, uh, I can either be a help or information source for people as they encounter those new groups. Uh, but I see myself as being an interim person. Thank you. Councilmember Rodenberg. Yes, it uh, just occurred to me uh, in the negotiation with Gig Harbor North and putting that entire package together, uh, how important were developer agreements and in retrospect you think they were beneficial to the city or were they uh, a negative well developer agreement the, the entire gig harbor north pre-annexation agreement is a developer agreement it's a predecessor of what you call developer agreements today so it spelled out things that you would expect a development agreement to spell out uh it uh it spelled out um, utility arrangements for water, sewer, street, storm. Uh, it, it spelled out 
uh, zoning considerations that were only subject to change later. Uh, initially, the zoning offered a zoning density that was less than what Pierce County offered on the same sewered area. So, you know, developer agreements are uh, only valid in my view, as long as they adhere to the existing tenants of zoning. When they exceed tenants of zoning, I think they're illegal. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Henderson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, kind of referring back to an answer from Councilmember Denson, you mentioned something about, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, renewing downtown on a small scale. I don't know if I heard that correctly, but can you explain that? Does that mean like fewer businesses, fewer everything, just keep it small or uh, it, maybe amplify that a bit for me? It means, uh, well, I, I don't feel so differently than Gary does about pavement treatments and, and ways of routing traffic. Uh, at one point, I gave lots of thought to this, and you can go online and probably still find uh, a sample notion of how to approach the downtown that I generated back in, gosh, I don't know, in the early 2000s, uh, along with Rob White, who uh, ended up working for the city of Ruston. And, uh, you know, I think the downtown can redevelop itself in the, in the small bore pedestrian way that people have come to know it without exceeding any of the essential height limitations, except maybe on property corners where a certain prominence from a design review point of view uh, actually is desirable. Um, but, it, you, you know, the city needs to take advantage of potential development opportunities and needs to be realistic, but height and bulk and scale issues are things that the design review um, program that Gig Harbor has engaged over time um, will satisfy. And I think we shouldn't change anything just willy nilly in order to produce more development downtown. Thanks. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, Council Member Likens. Yes, thank you, Mayor Markley. So Mark, you have extensive experience in city government in Washington state. So you're you would be transitioning from a role of being basically the chief executive or chief operating officer of a city to being one in seven voices or 14.9% of a city council vote. So how do you envision your relationship and role with the council members, the city staff, the city administrator, and the mayor? Notice Tony's smile when I say this. Yep. Uh, I have never viewed and all smart city administrators or city managers have never viewed themselves as people who work outside the aegis of the city council. We've always viewed ourselves as working within the boundaries of what council members want to achieve. Uh, a city manager who uh, thinks that they're some force of one, kind of like a city Rambo or something, doesn't last very long. And uh, yeah, see, I told you, Tony, I'd get a, I'd get a response out of that. And so I think uh, that the skills that I've learned to not be political, I haven't done anything but vote for 30 years. I haven't, I've gone to a caucus, but I can't go beyond the caucus, uh, even though it's in a different jurisdiction than the one I'm working in, because that's the ICMA code of ethics. So I'm used to being non-political and I'm used to thinking about service levels and issues, and I'm used to having results that don't necessarily mirror what it is I think is the most desirable outcome up front. But nevertheless, I've always found ways to help others get to some place that I think is good. So no, being an executive doesn't mean that you don't know how to be part of a team. And in fact, in some cases, like being a city administrator or city manager, it means that you learn more effectively how to be part of a team. Great, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Mr. Hoffman? Okay, I don't see any. Thank you again so much for being here and for your interest in, in being on the city council. We really appreciate it. Um, city Clerk Stecker, who is our next candidate? 
Council Next member up is Mary Barber has her hand up. online right now. I'm sorry, Tony, I missed that. Council member Likens has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Council member Likens, did you have a question? I was just wondering if I could request a quick five minute break before we go to the next candidate. Absolutely. That's okay with council. I think that's a great idea. Thank great you. idea. Okay, so we will uh, reconvene at around 213, 214. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to start the recording. Thank you. I'd like to reconvene the special meeting of January 18th, 2022. The time is 2.15 p.m. And uh, we have an announcement from our city clerk, Josh Stecker. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I just spoke with uh, Katrine Bietz, who's our fourth interview today. And after listening to the first couple of interviews, she's uh, informed us that she'd like to withdraw from consideration for appointment. So we are down to four candidates now. And our next candidate is Mary Barber, and we have Mary online and ready to go. So turn it over to you, Mayor. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm really happy to be here today to chat with you all about Gig Harbor. And I wanna start by telling you a little bit about myself. My husband and I moved here in the fall of 2014 from Anchorage, Alaska, where we had raised our two boys. Alan was a Colonel in the Alaska Air National Guard Search and Rescue Program. And I ran my public relations business and volunteered in the community while we raised our boys. Thomas and James are both now responsible adults who work in behavioral health with young children. When we got here, we renovated a home on Soundview Drive and we absolutely love Gig Harbor. I was born in Seattle and raised in Portland while Alan's family has deep roots in the area. And he went to school at University of Puget Sound. We both feel like we're back home. And one of the things we love most about the harbor is its quaint small town feel and the walkable waterfront. Alan and I both enjoy walking through the harbor as often as we can. As I mentioned, I was active in the community in Anchorage, so it was kind of natural that I did that here too. I joined the Parks Commission in January of 2020. And this has been a wonderful way to give back and support our amazing parks. While on the commission, I've worked hard to create more opportunities for residents to support the parks, including the approved but not yet implemented Adopt a Parks program, and a strategy to involve more companies and groups in Parks Appreciation Day that was derailed by the pandemic. This year, I've been on the PROS Plan subcommittee supporting the drafting of this six-year plan for the park system. This giant project, as Roger knows, has been a lot of fun and will be a guide for at least the next six years. We are looking forward to sharing it with the council next month. Alan and I are well aware that we moved here during the population boom that a number of candidates have already discussed and that you all talk about uh, quite a bit too. It appears that this boom may, and I really emphasize the word may, be slowing. Regardless of whether it is or isn't, one of the most important things the city needs to do is address the infrastructure needs which have become even more pressing because of all of us newcomers. Things like parks, public safety, water and wastewater, and yes, traffic. We need to make sure our systems are adequate for the population and create a welcoming place for visitors. So what does my ideal Gig Harbor look like? Maybe a bit like Brigadoon, but it's full of wide sidewalks where people are walking while waving and chatting with each other. It's a place where newcomers feel welcomed by those who've lived here for generations. There are groups of people at picnic tables enjoying a meal they just bought at a local small business. They're listening to live music, watching children play, and they're also watching all the activity happening on the water. When they're done, they might head back to work or pick up their kids at one of our amazing public schools and take them to an after school activity like soccer practice at the Gig Harbor Sports Complex. In the evening, they bike the Cushman Trail to visit friends. So it probably isn't raining like it has been today. Finally, I believe my strategic communication skills will be a helpful addition to the council. Many people don't realize public relations programs are built on research. As strategic communicators, we start each project by first defining the problem we're trying to solve. I then use a variety of research tools, which often involve talking with and hearing from stakeholders. Once we've listened and heard from everyone and done the research we need to do, 
we work together to find a solution which hopefully meets the needs of most stakeholders. That process helps ensure the awareness of our work among more people and find ways we can bring the council to more people. Thank you for your time today and every day as you lead our city. I would be honored to join your team and look forward to joining the council to help manage the city. Thank you, Mary. Um, our first question for you comes from council member Starset. Hi, Mary. Just wanted to also throw in there that I am, I am virtually calling in from Anchorage, Alaska. So. Uh, oh, yay. <laughs> it's cold today too. It is. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, what skills or knowledge do you have to offer the city council that differentiate you and would complement the council? There are two primary KSAs that I believe I bring to the council. The first I addressed in my introduction, and that's my public relations, strategic planning, and community building. I've spent 40 years working with organizations to help them solve problems and increase awareness about the organizations. During that time, I've worked with a variety of different culture groups helped improve tourism, introduced new products, and done extensive work in community engagement and participation. My work with the United Way of Anchorage to conduct a community needs assessment resulted in changing the way nonprofits provided services in the area. And the second, I believe, is my work, my experience on the Parks Commission. As a member of one of the city's advisory boards, I've learned about how the city works so it can hit the ground running in a unique way. I have some knowledge of the open meeting rules and other things that someone who's unaware of the regulations affecting these types of positions doesn't have. I don't pretend to know it all by any means, but do have a working understanding. Our work has been focused on understanding the needs of the residents of Gig Harbor when it comes to parks and trails, something that's critical for all council members. Thank you, Mary. Our second question comes from council member Denson. Yes, Mrs. Barber, what would you like Gig Harbor to look like in 10 years? What would you like to see change or stay the same? I'm gonna go back to Brigadoon. No, <laughs> um, but my first answer is that I, I wanna keep things the way they are right now, but we can't stop time. I want to be able to stop and enjoy the city that we love so much, but we can't. So let's talk about how we preserve that and what it looks like in 10 years. Quite simply, I hope it's a clean, walkable, vibrant, small town retaining the character that draws us all here today. But what does that mean in 2032, which sounds so far away? It means we've connected trails from neighborhoods to the community hub, the downtown waterfront. It means we've expanded our trail system and created a place where bikers, walkers, and runners recreate together. It means there are events on the waterfront throughout the year that bring us all together. That the water is full of residents enjoying the waterfront in a host of watercraft. We've preserved and even grown the tree canopy that gives us that PNW feel. Downtown businesses are in restored storefronts that add character to our marine city. We celebrate our residents and those who went before us through a variety of cultural events and history and we care for each other when one of us is in need. To get there, we need to establish and rebuild the long range plan that preserves our trees and creates tree trails and sidewalks from neighborhood to neighborhood. We need to embrace our businesses and provide them the tools they need to be successful. It may sound a bit like Utopia or Brigadoon, but if we don't have a dream, we won't be able to get there. Thank you. Our next question comes from Councilmember Wook. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, for being here today. When I'm out doorbelling and meeting Gig Harbor nader, native neighbors, they insist that as their council member, I do everything I can to limit growth. How would you honor and respect that request? Limiting growth is a noble goal, and I believe the challenge is in determining exactly what that means to Gig Harbor and to its residents. It can mean no new people to one person and no new businesses to another, no new roads, no new this, no new that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that to everyone. What I hear from residents is that we need to stop the growth of subdivisions we saw in the past 10 or so years 
We need to stop the clear cutting of trees to build new homes and instead create a plan for how and if we will expand housing. I also hear from residents that we need to establish more infrastructure to support the growth we've seen. That's why the PROS plan will include a call to connect trails between communities so we have a more walkable city. Another complaint I hear regularly is around permitting. We should be supporting our current residents who want to renovate their homes and not place unnecessary burdens on them. We can best limit growth by renovating what we have instead of always building new. And the same is true for our businesses. We need to do all we can to keep them here. Several years ago, it's my understanding the city created a transportation plan that showed how we could improve walkability and helped address some of these issues. It seems like a great time to revive that plan and start making that happen. So I think we need to engage the public in a conversation about who we wanna be when we grow up and start there. Thank you. Our next question comes from Councilmember Henderson. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, Mary. Um, my question is, uh, briefly provide your views on climate change. Should the city of Gig Harbor take any actions regarding climate change? If yes, outline three actions that you would support the city taking. If no, explain why no action is necessary. Okay. Uh, having grown up in the Pacific Northwest, I never thought I'd see the day when air conditioning was needed around here. But last summer's temperatures sure changed that. The reality is that climate change is here and we need to do all we can as individuals to help stop, stop its effects. Having said that, I believe there's only so much we as individuals can do. The commitment and regulation needs to come from governments and companies who have more power to reduce carbon emissions than one person does. I grew up in Oregon and spent summers combing the highway on Mount Hood looking for bottles to return to the store just after the bottle bill passed there in 1972. We filled baskets on our bikes with bottles every day. Since Oregon led the way, recycling programs have, have grown to become more commonplace in most cities. I would love to see an expansion of our recycling program. And that probably begins with creating ways to reuse some of what currently can't be recycled. When I was younger, my father started a company that developed a garbage compactor. This was before recycling programs were around and, so, and was so far ahead of its time, it unfortunately didn't succeed because the cruncher could compact 16 cans of garbage into a single can. And I think it could be a useful thing today too. I believe that by preserving trees and increasing walkability, Gig Harbor can do its part in stopping climate change. We should also be promoting recycling and supporting businesses that develop new ways to use materials, to reuse materials. We also need to look at ways to mitigate the high tides we've seen lately, beginning with plans like we put in place when we redid um, the pump station and the lift station at Jurassic Dock. All right, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. um, our next question comes from Councilmember Likens. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, Mary. Um, could you please briefly describe your views on COVID-19 pandemic? What do you believe our city's role is in policymaking, supporting and or communication with our citizens, businesses and organizations during the pandemic? Thank you, Brenda. Like all of you, I'm tired of the pandemic. I want to move on to a more normal life. I'm also a supporter of science and the CDC. I'm discouraged by those who refuse to do what they can as individuals to help stop the disease. But I'm also a glass half full kind of person and believe we will get there. I believe the city should continue to support the science and advocate on behalf of those experts who understand more about this disease than we ever could. Masking, vaccines, and physical distancing continue, continue to be our best weapons as we need to keep, and we need to keep advocating for them. Our businesses are hurting, and we've done a lot to support them by changing some of the regulations that allow outdoor spaces and parking. We need to listen to our businesses and help them however we can. They're the lifeblood of any community, and that's true here as well. I would also like to see the community 
the city communicate more to residents about masking and such, it can be done in a positive manner. And I believe we can and should do more to promote our local businesses who are operating safely in this time. A public awareness program about those opportunities that are available here would be really wonderful and something that would be relatively easy to put together. Great, thank, thank you. you. Our next question comes from Councilmember Rodenberg. Thank you, Mayor Markley. Uh, in the performance of our responsibilities as council members, we often have subjects that require that we come together as a group with a solution that is best for the citizens of Gay Harbor and also satisfies the majority uh, on council. Uh, so there are often diff differences in among council members and we have to negotiate those. So could you describe for us uh, how you achieved a good goal in the most difficult negotiation that you'd ever been in? Sure, and I think first, every organization faces these challenges. And one that operates under a public microscope like the city council has a unique set of challenges. But I believe that the first step is listening and hearing each other. And the distinction between those is important. I can listen to the words you're saying, which without actually hearing their meaning. We need to do both. And working together toward a collaborative solution really requires both of those things. It requires everyone to give and take so that we can get to a good solution. And let me give you an example. When I was on the board of the National, the National Board of the Public Relations Society of America, we were hiring a new president. We met two amazing candidates on the day our annual conference was starting. Leadership unfortunately didn't allow enough time for discussion before our next event started. So the president called for a vote before everyone had even had a chance to say their piece. One applicant received one more vote than the other. So the chair adjourned the meeting without allowing additional conversation. A lot of us were kind of upset. So we got another meeting room where we could continue the discussion. We knew the person who got one more vote, vote was going to be hired, but we wanted to talk about it. We talked for an hour and in the end, we all had the information we needed and felt more comfortable because we listened and heard each other. We used this tactic, unfortunately, several times while this individual was chair, but we were always able to resolve it and remain at least on speaking terms with each other because we listened, we heard, and we respected each other's voice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the final question comes from me. As a member of the council, you would be expected to participate in government activities outside of the regular city council meetings. Do you have any particular scheduling problems that would preclude your participation? Quite simply, no. <laughs> this would be my highest priority. Great, thank you. Um, we have several minutes for additional questions. Uh, yes, council member Wook. Thank you. I have two questions for you, uh, Mary. Um, are you vaccinated and boosted? Yes. <laughs> so, so I figured as much. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm ready, ready for another me. booster, actually. <laughs> I've seen one article. Council Member Likens may know more about this. It says if you got your booster, your first booster in August, that you're eligible again. So. Oh, goody. <laughs> so. Anyway, yeah. my second question has to do with the development and the shopping center that is on Judson Street. Mm -hmm. Currently, it is in a height restricted zone. And uh, there has been discussion about uh, changing that height restriction uh, to allow it to be taller than floor level and one above. Uh, are you in favor of uh, are, are you in favor of changing the height restriction and uh, and having it be taller? And if so, how many floors would you like to see it? I, being somebody who lives in the high restricted areas of area of town, I'm not in favor of changing those. No, um, I would not be in favor of changing that zoning. I, I think that the view corridor is important and that's one of the reasons that people come here is for those protections and I would not support that. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, Councilmember Denson. 
Yes, Ms. Barber, I'm not asking for a commitment, but if you were appointed to city council, um, would you intend to run for city council when this position comes back up for election? I would have to decide that at the time or closer to the time. Right now, I would say it's a strong maybe, but I, I think that everyone has to see where they are at that point in time too. Thank you. Um, yes, Council Member Likens. Great, thank you. Um, so Mary, you have a background in communications mm -hmm. and public relations. And one of the things I ran on, and part of it came out of doorbelling all the citizens that I met on my campaign, was to represent citizens, all citizens from every neighborhood without bias, and to increase engagement and participation. So with your experience in communication, do you have any ideas on how to increase equitable and inclusive participation and representation with city and city council? I think that the more that we can take the council to the citizens, the better. And I would like, and I'm sure that Josh isn't showing his face right now for good reason. No, <laughs> oh, there he is, oh goody, no. I would like us to be able to go to find out a way that we can within all the regulations, go to different neighborhoods or homeowners groups, that kind of thing, go to different parts of the city and have our council meetings so that it becomes easier for a citizen to come to our meetings. It, we, I think we can take our, our things to them I also think that there's a way that we can use quick surveys and some of those kinds of things that would be done through um, Laura Pettit's department and that kind of thing to ask people's input so that we're asking for their input as much as we're going to them and taking our meetings to them. So I think we can do quick polls more often and some of those kinds of things are just two quick ideas that I could come up with. Great, thank you. So get going on that, Josh. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Barber? Okay, I don't see any. Thank you so much for being here and for your interest in being on the council. We really appreciate your time this afternoon. Thank you for your time. All right, City Clerk Stecker. Our last interview is with Les McCollum and I've got him coming on here momentarily. Okay. Les, it looks like we have you unmuted, but I don't see your camera. If you can turn that on for us. Hang on here. We're working on, uh, there we go. There we go. We see you. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. Um, and go ahead and give us your introduction. Can you hear us, Les? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Just making sure. Go yeah. ahead and, and uh, present your introduction to the council. Okay, Mayor, council members, welcome to the southwest corner of Gig Harbor Bay. My wife and I have lived in the uh, Edgewater condos for seven years, and we've been in Greater Gig Harbor for decades. It's a very special opportunity to be a council member and to serve my community, to be involved, to contribute. But most importantly for me, it fits my qualifications and my interest. That's critical in why I am an applicant today. I have a master's in public administration with an emphasis in city management. That training includes great knowledge of city organization. My career has included working with major uh, policymaking boards of commissions, particularly the last 25 years. This experience uh, is valuable to the role of being a council member. I understand the role of a policymaker. I understand policy making, and I understand governing. Uh, a lot of other distinctions I could go into detail there, but uh, those are critical. Uh, I recognize the many changes in the council makeup over the last years. I would bring a uh, fresh perspective. Uh, I would bring objectivity. 
and I'm not a single issue applicant. I understand uh, many of the city's challenges, especially growth, uh, others including traffic, infrastructure, and budget. But most importantly, I am ready to put in the adequate time, more than adequate time to learn more uh, and be qualified to be a good council member. I'm very organized. I'm a quick learner. I can make decisions. I am analytical. I'm a good listener. And I think I have interpersonal skills that would help me with stakeholders and council members to come to consensus on policy. Many Gig Harbor citizens and civic uh, leaders encourage my candidacy. Um, they're ready with references if you have any uh, interest in those. Many of your other candidates have special experiences and ties to Gig Harbor. I bring policy making knowledge and other qualifications. I am independent and without agenda, and I'm committed to collaborate with the council members uh, and the mayor to develop quality policy. Thank you very much. Our first question for you comes from council member Storset. Hi, Les. What skills or knowledge do you have to offer the city council to differentiate you and would complement the council? Well, I don't mean to be redundant, but I think I'm about to repeat just what I did in my application and, and I, in my opening remarks. I have a master's with a degree in public administrative city emphasis. Uh, I know policy making, I know policy makers, uh, I, I notice a difference between that and staff, et cetera. Uh, objective, fresh perspective, no agenda, highly organized, good listener, can make decisions, interpersonal skills. I suspect the others can do the same, but uh, that's what drives me in a, in a perfect fit for this council position. Thank you. Our next question comes from Council Member Denson. Yes, thank you, Mr. McCallum. My question is, what would you like Gig Harbor to look like in 10 years? What would you like to see change or stay the same? It's a great question, and I probably will answer some of it in the next question on having to do with growth, but um, I'm concerned uh, about the preservation of the city's culture and character. character. Uh, more specifically, uh, more bigger parks, more and bigger parks, traffic solutions, senior center, center uh, fuel dock, uh, essentially keeping the city at the same size. Thank you. Uh, our next question is from Councilmember Wu. Yes, thank you for being here this afternoon. When I'm out doorbelling and meeting our Gig Harbor neighbors, they insist that as their city council member, I do everything I can to limit growth in our city. How would you honor and respect that request? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, you door my old, at my home uh, several years ago when you ran for office. I share many concerns regarding growth, annexation, traffic, and others. Uh, I'm concerned. Uh, I support policy that maintains city quaintness, maritime culture, character. Um, I think you need to require in all policy, um, pardon me, council public discussions, when you're talking about rather building re uh, regulation or zoning, a discussion on how it impacts growth. Just like the EPA, if you're gonna uh, develop something, you have to have uh, an analysis of that. Thank you. Our next question comes from Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Hello, Les, how are you doing today? Very good. Good, uh, I got a question here, three. Briefly provide your views on climate change. Should the city of Gig Harbor take any actions regarding climate change? If yes, outline three actions that you would support the city taking. If no, explain why no action is necessary. Another good question. I share concern regarding climate change and it's very, very real challenges. Uh, the city should address climate change head on, straight ahead. Three action, actions that I think uh, are possibilities require once again, all policy and statutes that come before the council to address climate change and 
and its impact, how you could re help reduce climate change and limiting. I recommend adopting and support measures to, to reduce cities uh, and, uh, and others' carbon footprint. And then a few items would be uh, city fleet uh, being electric, charging stations, campaigns to encourage citizens and businesses to be sensitive to climate change. Thank you. Thank you. The next question uh, was presented by Councilmember Likens, and I will read this question. Brief, briefly describe your views on the COVID-19 pandemic. What do you believe our city's role is in policymaking, supporting and or communication with our citizens, businesses, and organizations during the pandemic? Another great question. I believe COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic requires serious policy steps. The city should share that posture openly. Uh, I would recommend strong consideration to adopt and follow county, state, and federal steps and policies where appropriate. I suggest that uh, you show by example, strongly encourage citizens, businesses, and organizations to adopt good health practices social distancing, vaccinations, masks, and more. Great, thank you. Uh, next question comes from Councilmember Rodenberg. Thank you, Mayor Markley. Uh, Ms. McCallum, in the performance of our responsibilities as council members, uh, we often have subjects that require that we come together as a group with a solution that is best for the citizens of Gate Harbor and satisfies the majority of council. Also, there are often uh, differences of opinion that have to be negotiated to a solution that the majority of council can support. Please describe how you helped achieve the outcome of the most important and complex negotiation you've ever been involved with. Once again, uh, per my application, I regularly observed and were involved in good policy decisions. Uh, I could go in great detail, but essentially I traveled a great deal and worked with state uh, jurisdictions that were policy making groups. Specifically, I think the, the best negotiations, as you call them, would be to encourage communication, to work for a win win outcome with individuals, always stay positive, uh, no destructive character challenges, uh, stay focused on the objective and the benefit. In this case, it would be Gig Harbor and its citizens' uh, policy and, and uh, benefits. Thank you. Thank you. And our last question comes from myself. Uh, as a member of the council, you would be expected to participate in government activities outside of the regular city council meetings. Do you have any particular scheduling problems that would preclude your participation? I have no... Uh, problems that would produce, preclude me from participation, uh, recently retired. Okay, wonderful. Are there additional questions from council? I guess council member Wook. Yes, thank you. Here I am with my two questions again. Uh, so are you vaccinated and boosted? Absolutely. Thank you. Second question has to do with uh, the development on Judson Street and that is located in the height restriction zone. Uh, are you in favor of um, reducing or in, are you in favor of building it taller, changing things to build that uh, shopping center taller than what's allowed in the height restriction area? I've heard that discussion in the city. I get my mail there every day. Um, I'm not supportive of uh, higher uh, ability to build. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Denson. Thank you, Mr. McCollum. My question is, um, should you be appointed for city council? Would it be your intention to run for city council when the position comes up for election in 2024? Other issues could come up like health and so forth, but my intention would be to run. Great, thank you. Councilmember Rodenberg. Yes, Mr. McCollum, uh... Uh, if your intention is to run in 2024, uh, possibly, uh, is there a reason that you haven't ran for city council in a general election up until this point of where we may appoint someone? Thank you for asking the question. My uh, career included weekly travel. I got on a plane on Mondays and come, came home on Fridays. 
it wouldn't have been fair and I would not have been able to participate. Thank you. Uh, I now have the opportunity to uh, use those skills and I'm excited about it. Thank you so much. Any other questions from council? Yes, council member Henderson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, when I was out campaigning and knocking on doors and discovering neighborhoods I'd never seen before, um, I sort of noticed there's maybe like three gig harbors all in a row. We've got downtown, we've got uptown, we have North Gig Harbor. How would you um, connect and represent all three of those areas of Gig Harbor? They are relatively different. Um, so it might be a be good to hear how you might then reach out to three different types of neighborhoods. Well, several people have commented on that. Uh, I would uh, feel obliged and res a responsible council to uh, uh, essentially uh, support all of those groups. I'm thinking of one thing I read in some research on today's meeting was that you're in the parks world, you did a major survey and you checked out interest and priorities and uh, uh, use capacities. I think that kind of thing can work and uh, should be used more often. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Okay, I don't see any. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. We really appreciate your time and your interest in being on the council. And we thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, City Clerk Stecker, our next steps. Uh, we've completed the interview. So the next steps are council discussion. Um, at this point, if council uh, desires or feels it's necessary, we can go into executive session. Um, you can discuss the qualifications of the candidates. Um, after that discussion, then we will come out and we'll make nominations and then vote on the nominees. So is it the, maybe by show of hands, is it the will of the council to go into executive session at this point? I see heads nodding. Yes, okay. So yes, let's do that. So um, okay. Josh, if you could explain the process then for the candidates yes. and then for us. Yes, so council members, you will need to log out of this meeting and log into the link that I sent you uh, earlier this morning that has the special Zoom meeting for the executive session. Um, if you didn't get that, uh, wave your hand frantically and I'll make sure I send it to you again. Uh, but log out of this meeting completely and then open that meeting. Um, Tony will be there waiting for you. And then when you're done with that, you will come back to this meeting room. So make sure you have the link still for this meeting because you'll come back here. And then to our candidates, uh, our candidates will all stay in this meeting. Don't go anywhere. Don't um, hang up or, or leave the meeting. You'll just see a lot of dead air until council comes back. But that is the plan. Um, and then Mayor, we'll need to read the uh, RCW for this. Do you have it handy or would you like me to read it? Will you please read it? I do not have it handy. Okay. So council is going to go into executive session uh, to evaluate the qualifications of a candidate for appointment to elective office for RCW 4230110, section one, subsection H. Um, action will be taken following the executive session. And how long do you intend to be in executive session for? I think we'll start with 15 minutes. So we should come back right around 3.07, 3.08, sometime around there. And if we need to extend, uh, we will send an email to you and you can let the candidates know that we're extending. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, thank you. Great. I am uh, going in to open up the meeting room and I see Council Member Wu. I would like to reconvene the special council meeting of January 18th, 2022. The time is 3.22 p.m. Um, City Clerk, I'm gonna ask you for your support here for a moment in just kind of guiding us through the next steps. Yeah, so at this point, uh, we are out of executive session. So um, the next step here is for council to um, make their nominations for the applicants that they want to consider voting on. Um, nominations can be made by any council member. Um, they do not require a second. And then once uh, council is done making nominations, they can uh, make a motion to close nominations. That'll require a second and a vote. 
And then at that point, we can begin the voting process. Okay. So I will give you all a moment to write down your nominations if you haven't already. No, no, they, they just so need to make the nomination. Then they, oh, and then they'll, yeah. yeah just, at this point, we don't write the, that will be the voting process. process. So this is just nominating. Okay. Council Member Wook. Yes, I, I thought that they were all four just really excellent candidates. I, I'm going to start off by nominating Mary Barber. Council member Starset. Oh, oh good. You can go to Roger. Thank you. Okay. Council member Henderson. Well, uh, Jenny nominated the person that I wanted, so I'll drop my nomination. Oh, okay. Council member, oh, let's see. Council member Rodenberg. Oh, you're on mute. I'm on mute, Mr. I would like to nominate Gary Glenn. Okay, any other hands? I don't see any. There are Is no other there... nominations, then we would need a, a motion to close nominations. All motion to close. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, motion passes to close nominations. Um, is there a statement that any of our council members would like to make at this time? Yes, council member Henderson. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, during our executive session, we had a pretty good discussion about recusing ourselves um, on further investigation and exploration of this topic, I have decided that uh, I will vote for whomever is the good candidate for this and that I have no conflicts of interest that arose from this person donating to my campaign. Thank you for that. Councilmember Likens. Yes, thank you, Mayor Markley. Um, I also, um, have given some deep thought that I will be judging the candidates based on their merits, irregardless of their donation to my campaign. I've had no previous knowledge that any of the applicants were going to be running for city council. Um, I only became aware when they applied to the position and it had no influence over my vote today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Council member Storset. Yes, thank you. Thank you to all the candidates. Thank you for putting yourself out there. Uh, I do envy you that this is uh, an appointed position versus uh, running a campaign, um, but hope to see that you run again in two years um, so we can continue uh, the progress that we're making. Um, also, I just wanna acknowledge, um, you know, from our executive session, uh, both following the comments of Brenda and Roger, um, that they have, or I don't want to speak for the whole council. That's why I think you see the other hands raised, but uh, for myself, I trust that they are making the best decision that is unbiased and um, thank you. Thank you. Council member Rodenberg. Yes, I also want to speak to uh, the support of both council member Henderson and council member Lycan. I have every confidence that they're going to be making their vote on the abilities and the experiences of the candidates. So uh, they certainly have my support in uh, removing their recluse. Thank you. Council member Wook. Um, yes, to our council members, Lycan and Henderson, uh, I have every confidence that the decision that you will make uh, is made within the utmost integrity and without any influence of any donations or support that have been made to your previous campaign. So um, thank you for this conversation. To our candidates, uh, the four of them, they all were very well qualified and I hope you run again on another time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Denson. 
Yes, I will echo those same sentiments. I'm thankful to um, Council Members Likens and Henderson for lending your voice because you know, I, I know you all are very thoughtful and will make a good honorable decision. And thank you to all the candidates as well. This was a tough decision. Thank you. Uh, Interim City Administrator, Tony Paisecki. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I want uh, council members Lichen and Henderson to know that I support um, their thoughts when it comes to their ability to make a fair and unbiased decision as to who should be the uh, next council member. Um, and just like when there is a question of appearance of fairness in front of the council when it comes to a land use action, council members are the ones who ultimately have to make the decision as to whether or not um, they can be fair. And I believe they both expressed that very clearly here. And I support them in uh, making whatever decision they want to make today. Yes, I echo the comments of our, our council and our interim city administrator and support you both as well in whatever decision that you make. Josh, where does, where does that leave us now for? I think at this um, point we're ready for the vote. So okay. each council member should have a piece of paper and a pencil or pen, and you're going to write the name of the candidate, the nominee that you're going to support. Um, and then when the mayor calls for the vote, you'll all hold up your pieces of paper simultaneously and we will uh, tally them up. And I'll leave that to the mayor to read each person's name that they hold up. Um, and if we're having problems uh, making it out, then we'll ask you to read it for us, but we should be able to see it on your screen. Okay. So uh, I, at this time, go ahead and write the name and then when the mayor calls for the vote, we'll hold them up together. Yes. And it looks like we may have lost video for Councilmember Wook, so we'll wait for her video to come back on. There it is. Oh, there you are. Oh, she was there she are. was getting rid of that beautiful wallpaper. Yes. <laughs> she wants us to read her vote. <laughs> yes. Okay. I will count to three and then hold up your papers as close to your camera as you can, and we'll we'll go from there. Um, okay. One, two, three. Okay, so I, if I'm seeing this correctly, I am seeing Gary <laughs> Glenn for Councilmember Denson, Gary Glenn for Councilmember Likens, Mary Barber for Seth Storset, Gary Glenn for Lee Rodenberg, Mary Barber for Roger Henderson, and Mary Barber for Jenny Wook. So we're okay. tied three to three. Yes, that's what I was. That's what I think I was seeing, Josh. I hope you're writing those those down because I was trying to read them. <laughs> we have a three to three tie, so uh, the options here are: we can go back into executive session if council would like to, or you can uh, call for another vote if council is ready to vote again and see if anyone is interested in changing their opinion. What is by a show of hands? What is the will of the council? Would you like to go back into executive session? Show of hands. One. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so we will go ahead and go back into executive session. Let's say, uh, let's start with fifteen minutes. We may need we may not need that much, but let's do fifteen minutes. So we'll be back right around three forty six. Okay. So again, we'll log out of this meeting. Candidates stay on this call, and then we'll join you back in fifteen minutes. I would like to reconvene the Gig Harbor City Council special meeting of January 18th, 2022. The time is 3.49 p.m. Uh, we have just adjourned executive session and uh, now we will, uh, City Clerk Stecker, will we do nominations again or go right to an immediate second vote? We have nominations so we can go straight to another vote if council's ready. Okay, so I will give you all just couple seconds here to write down names if you haven't already. Okay. Okay, on the count of three, hold up your names to the camera. One, two, three. 
Okay. Councilmember Wook, I see Mary Barber. Councilmember Denson, I see Gary Glenn. Councilmember Henderson, I see Mary Barber. Councilmember Rodenberg, I see Gary Glenn. Councilmember Storset, I see Mary Barber. And Councilmember Likens, if you can raise yours up just a little bit, I see Mary Barber. Okay, so I believe, City Clerk, if you can confirm, is that four for Mary Barber? That's four votes for Mary Barber. Okay, congratulations to Mary Barber. I don't know, can we bring her back on? Yeah, or bring her in. Let's sure. bring her back in. Thank you to all of the candidates. You were all very well qualified. This was a tough council decision and I'm very, very proud of them for, for all of their hard work in this meeting. This was, this was not easy, not easy. And we just appreciate all of your willingness to apply and to be on our council. And Mary, we are just thrilled that you were chosen. So congratulations. You're on mute, Mary. And you're on Mary. mute. Would you like to say a couple of words? Uh, I will just say that I'm really looking forward to working with you. I admire all of you. I've met almost everybody at least once, I think. Um, and I look forward to working with you and making Gig Harbor an amazing place to live and work and raise a family. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Any council members wish to make any comments before we adjourn the meeting? Yes, council member Wook. Yes, uh, welcome, uh, Mary Barber. And you'll be, uh, I guess, sworn in at the next council meeting. So we're looking forward to that. And again, to all the other candidates, you were really all quite well qualified and, and it was not an easy decision. So I, I hope that um, there's an election in two years and another one two years after that. So uh, hone up your walking shoes and uh, get out and do the business. And until then, there are uh, committees and volunteer commissions that you need to be on and you would be a valuable asset. So please look those up and consider. And we know already there's going to be a vacancy on the Parks Commission. Yes, there is. So, so please, Roger and I have decimated that. Well, there's actually two with, uh, with uh, Councilmember Henderson being there. Yes. So, so yeah. please consider trying out for the Parks Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Henderson. Thank you, Mary. Uh, welcome, Mary. Very happy to have you on board. Uh, my condolences to Ben Coronado, another loss to the uh, <laughs> Parks Commission to Matt. He's actually watching. Yeah, I, I see that. I see him on the list. So sorry, Ben. Uh, hey, you know, you can apply later on. So anyway, uh, welcome, Mary. And uh, all I can say is uh, you've got a steep learning curve ahead of you, yeah. but uh, I think it's going to be great. So thank you much for applying and congratulations. Thank you. Councilmember Likens. Yes, thank you. So first of all, Mary, I want to welcome you. Um, we had such great candidates, and I think we're going to all work really well together. And I want to echo Council Member Wook's comments about having such a qualified group of candidates to talk to today. I took many notes and took your ideas to heart, um, and I look forward to staying engaged. Um, I have learned a lot from all of you, and I look forward to working with um, soon to be council member Barber. And I just want to thank everyone, everyone in the council today for your support. Um, I wanted to provide ethical and transparent leadership to our citizens and your support meant a lot to me and I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Council member Denson. Yes, congratulations, Mary. One thing that, well, two things that I, I love about you is your passion for the community and what a hard worker you are. And you've proven that time and time again on the Parks Commission, taking on the role with Ben and, and the rest of the Parks Commission as well on the pros plan. But you know, you're always the first one to email and want to meet and talk about things and understand things. So you take your role seriously, and I know you'll do that on council. So I'm super excited about working with you. And I'll echo the same things everybody else has. This was a really tough 
Tough, tough decision. Great candidates, great ideas. Everyone loves this community. We're very fortunate to have this kind of a, a pool of candidates, but it did make it really challenging to decide. So congratulations, Mary, and thanks to everybody else who um, applied. Thank you. Uh, Tony Paisecki. I just want to say congratulations, Mary. I look forward to working with you. Thank you all. And it was a great pool of candidates. I really enjoyed reading everybody's information and then hearing the ideas today and what everybody wants to get done. And we have a lot of work to do. Yes. We're fortunate to have so many people who care so much about our community mm -hmm. and are willing to roll up their sleeves and get involved. It's, it was very inspiring to read all these applications. And um, again, just thank you to, to everybody. Um, are there any, I think Mary, our city clerk will be in touch with you soon. Uh, maybe I think right after the meeting and uh, we'll do next steps for your oath of office. And um, so Josh, is there anything you want to explain before I ask for a motion to adjourn? Uh, no, we will work with Mary and get her onboarded with IT and uh, we'll get her in here to take her oath of office. That'll need to happen soon. Um, we'll do it officially here in the office before the next meeting. Um, Can I still do the Parks Commission meeting tomorrow so I don't quite abandon Ben yet? <laughs> I, I think you do get that one last meeting. At least I did. So I, I would think you would be able we'll, to do we'll, that. We'll let you do the meeting tomorrow and then we can swear you in Thursday. How's that? Okay. <laughs> you need to get okay. sworn in and resign from the Parks Commission, but you can do that on Thursday. Okay. So, and Mary, be ready because the fire hose is coming. Fire I is have coming for you. Right. <laughs> But don't be scared. We're all in this together, right? Yep. <laughs> we just do what we can. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, thank you again to council. Thank you again to our candidates. And thank you to our clerk and our administrator for all of your support through this meeting as well. And um, with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you again. Thank right. you. Thank you.